your Bibles with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. It's a great book title. Yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are you glad God's not through with you yet? Amen. How do you know, Pastor John, God's not done with me yet? Are you still breathing? God's got something left for you to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the word this morning. But would you ask your neighbor a question for me? Okay. I mean, you know, just ask him. Did it really? Come on, just like him. Did it really have to be a fig? How many like figs? How many hate figs? How many are like, eh? Most people are either I love them, I hate them. Not very many are kind of eh in the middle, right? I want to speak this morning on did it really have to be a fig tree? John chapter 1. Starting in the 43rd verse. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. By the way, if we were to read the previous verses, you'd find out the day before, Andrew had been a disciple of John the Baptist. When Jesus came walking by the river and John points out and says, hey, behold, there he is, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Andrew decided right then and there, John, appreciate your work. I'm done with you. I'm following Jesus. Okay? And Andrew had gone and he had found his brother Peter, Simon. And when he approached Simon, he said, hey, we found, uh, you know, we found the Messiah. John the Baptist told us about him. So they come up, and Jesus immediately says, hey, you know, you're no longer Simon. From now on, you'll be called Peter. And they hung out with Jesus. Next day, Jesus is walking by. Their town sees Philip. How many know? In a small town, you know all of them, especially when you're all fishermen. You guys all know each other. And so you've got uh, Andrew. You've got Peter there. They've got their friend Philip. Jesus looks at Philip and says, hey, follow me. And these guys are guys who are, are, are serious about their, you know, serving and seeking God. You didn't go out and follow John the Baptist in the wilderness and stick around if you weren't really looking for the Messiah, okay? Now, verse 45, Philip found Nathanael and said unto him, we have found him of whom in the law Moses and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Verse 46, and here's the first question. Nathanael said unto him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Somebody say first question. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Some of your scriptures might say in whom there is no guile. And Nathanael says, how do you know me? Somebody say second question. How do you know me? Jesus answered and said, before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree. Now, if you like to underline things in your Bible, I would recommend you underline this three, three words right there, the fig tree. Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now, whatever was happening under that fig tree that Jesus saw was so profound that look at Nathaniel's response. Nathanael answered him and said unto him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. 
He goes from, is there anything good can even come out of Nazareth? I don't know. I'm a little bit skeptical about this. How do you know me? I saw you under the fig tree. You are God. You're the king of Israel. Amen. What in the world was going on under the fig tree? Jesus responds, and here's the third question. Because I said unto you, I saw you under the fig tree, you believe? You're going to see greater things than this. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd minister to every soul in this room, to all those watching online, as we look into your word at just what was happening under that fig tree. I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. What in the world was going on under this fig tree? The truth is we really don't know for certain what was going on under that fig tree. We do know that uh, you know, young rabbinical students or those who were, were serious about a relationship with God were urged by their leaders that they ought to go and spend time studying the Torah, the law, the first five books of the Bible, and spending time in prayer, and they needed to do this in a place where they could get alone, like under a fig tree. We know, of course, this is perfect because it's the 49th year since you guys started. How many know that we grew up around here with some Pastor Billisms? <laughs> Here's what I mean by Pastor Billism. See if you can finish the line. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. Take a nap. Very good. The anointing comes at a price. Okay. Normal is a. Okay, you understand Pastor Billisms, right? 52 keys to success are, number one, deliver the goods. Number two, deliver the goods. Number three, deliver the goods. Don't die on the hill. You got these Pastor Billisms, right? Well, if Pastor Bill had been a rabbi in the first century, here would have been a Pastor Billism. They would have grown up around, okay? They were encouraged to spend time in prayer. How many could imagine Rabbi Sanders encouraging you to spend time in prayer, All right? And they were told, if you, uh, you know, if, if you go into your time of prayer and you don't begin by spending time seeking God for the Messiah to come, then you haven't actually spent any time in prayer. Concept being, they wanted their heart and their mind so wired, so looking for God's coming king, God's answer, that if they didn't spend time in that, they'd just been focusing on themselves and they hadn't really been in prayer. They probably had been complaining. I got one amen on that wonderful statement right there. That would have been the concept. Wouldn't it be just like God? How many know that so many times in Scripture you have that place where it says they reasoned inside their hearts? And Jesus asked him the question. He didn't need to wait for them to say anything out loud. He just said to him, hey, why are you reasoning in your, th you know, in your mind arguing about this? I mean, no, Jesus is a mind reader. He knows what's going on in there. Is anybody uncomfortable? Wouldn't that be just like God for somebody to be sitting there seeking God? God, I'm looking for the Messiah and to get a tap on the shoulder. Hey, we found him. Well, that could have been what was going on. Or he could have been like the first time we see a fig tree in the scripture. All the way back in Genesis chapter 3, right after Adam and Eve ate the fig, we know it was a fig, the fruit that they weren't supposed to touch. Because after they had sinned and the Lord had departed from them, what did they do? They instantly attempted to try to cover themselves up by sewing fig leaves together and when God showed up, God showed up and said, Adam, where are you? And they said, hey, we're hiding. Why are you hiding? We're trying to cover up our nakedness. Who told you you were naked? Isn't it just like God to show up and call somebody who's trying to cover themselves up and say, hey, I've got something better in store for you. Come and meet the Messiah. Here's a fascinating one. Uh, there was this king of Assyria by the name of Sennacherib. 
came and he was about to, dis, you know, he was laying siege to Jerusalem. They are outnumbered, outgunned, outmanned. And he begins to shout out to everybody inside Jerusalem in the Hebrew tongue. He said, hey, don't listen to Hezekiah. He is going to get you killed. If you follow him, make peace with me. How many know making peace with the enemy is never a good idea? Just be at peace and come under my jurisdiction and every man, watch this, will drink water from his own cistern and enjoy the shade of his own what? Hey, are you telling me that if I get under the fig tree, I can have peace with the enemy? Here he is. And I want you to notice the kind of questions that come from a fig tree. We found the Messiah. Can anything good really come from Nazareth? Can anything good really come from going to church today? Can anything good really come from spending a little time in prayer? Can anything good really come from turning my other cheek when the, the guy hits me? I mean, I just want to hit him so it doesn't happen again. Can anything good come from serving God? Can anything good? These are fig tree kind of questions. And I want to tell you, what happens under the fig tree is either going to keep us from experiencing the more that God has in store for us. I got to thinking about some fig tree mindsets. Did you wear your steel-toed boots today? Okay, fig tree mindsets. Can anything good? Are you more concerned and consumed with escaping from earth into heaven than you are with bringing heaven into this earth? That's a fig tree mindset. Pastor John, what are you talking about? What's on your mind? Is it winning the world for Christ? Or is it escaping out of discomfort I got one ouch it's quiet this morning it's that way first service too let me think about this here, here, here's just a few references Psalm chapter 2 verse 8 ask of me and I will give unto you the nations as your inheritance what's on God's mind not getting everybody out but getting back in control of this world and winning people Matthew chapter 28, go unto all the world, not go isolate yourself on a mountain. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's interested in going out into the world. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, where? In all the world for a witness, and then shall the end come. God's interested in seeing his kingdom be preached all over this world. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You don't receive the power of the Holy Spirit so you can go hang out and have a happy meeting. Not one amen. That's good preaching. I'll amen myself. Amen, Pastor John. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say it this way. Fig tree mindset. I'm more consumed. Okay. Let me give you another one. Jesus taught them, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth, On earth as it is in heaven. Where did he ever teach you to pray that you can escape the earth? See, a fig tree mindset, I'm more concerned with getting out of my pressure situation than I am of bringing heaven to earth. You sit here in a fig tree in this place. God, get me out. God, get me out. God, get me out. And God's saying, I want to bless you and answer your prayer, but the place I'm going to do it is when you go out into the world and preach the gospel. That's where it works. It doesn't work under the fig tree. Amen? Here's one. The fig tree mentality, fig tree mindset of isolation. Maybe insulation. Here's what it looks like. 
Let me just ask a question. This will be fun. You can answer this one, all right? How many know there's problems in this world? (laughs) If Jesus were walking around Sutherland today, would he only hang out with the church folks? Or would he go out into the highways and the hedges and walk amongst those who haven't yet heard the call of a Savior? I have shared this and I have apologized to this man publicly so I can tell this story again. I only use it as an excuse. My only excuse was I was a teenager. How many have stories from when you were a teenager that we don't need to talk about? So I'll share one. You don't have to share any of yours. But I'm sitting here in church, and it was the first Sunday that William Powell came into church. How many remember the first weekend William Powell came into church? Okay, you, you know, don't, don't respond if you had this same reaction. He came in on a prayer meeting, gave his life, to, you know, it's a dramatic story, gave his life to the Lord, you know, and things. Came back the following Sunday, you know, I think it may have been the next day. I don't know when it was, but, but came back in within the next couple of days. Now, you've got to understand, well, William Powell didn't walk in looking like a preacher. Uh, he looked like he had fallen face first into a tackle box. His pants were hanging down way too low. I don't know if he'd had a shower in six months or six weeks because he'd been living under a bridge on the streets. He had a, you know, I mean, he, he is not looking like anybody in the room. And as a teenage boy, I sat right back about where Ken is when he walked in, and this was my reaction. What are they doing letting him in here? Now, I am glad I did not say that out loud. I may have gotten another Pastor Billism. (laughs) I don't want to be around those people who aren't godly. That's a fig tree of isolation. Have we forgotten that Jesus gave us three pictures of what the church is to be? Light. I don't need to isolate myself from darkness because light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it, cannot stop it. That when darkness covers the face of the earth and gross darkness of people, that's when we're called to rise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen on you and I. How dare I isolate and put my lamp under a bushel? We're called to be salt. All these people on these low-sodium diets anymore. My grandparents lived in an RV for 18 years. They loved it. They'd go down to, uh, you know, down south during the, the winter and come up here as soon as it started getting warm. And they'd, you know, they'd go fishing everywhere, you know, and things. And they were at our house for, I, I think it was like a Thanksgiving dinner or something. And my mom has the exact same looking, uh, like, salt and pepper shakers as they had in their RV. But there was a difference. In the RV, they had an extra lid that you screwed down because if it tipped over and all the driving, you didn't want the stuff to spill all over. My mom's didn't. And so my grandpa's sitting there, and he's telling a story, which my family does. They're good storytellers. And he's telling a story. He's not paying much of attention, and he, and he starts unscrewing that lid, not thinking anything of it because it's just natural. 18 years, you unscrew the lid, you want salt. My mom and my mom's, you unscrew the lid, now the whole thing's open. He's not paying attention, and I, it was one of those things where I saw it, but you didn't have enough time to say anything when I realized. And he goes over, and he starts going like, and he looks down, and the whole bottle of salt dumps right onto his plate. <laughs> and we all had a great big laugh about that. But how many know, once it's salted, you can't unsalt it? Once it's been assaulted... And salt will affect and permeate everything it touches. And we think we need to keep our salt in a little container, just you and me and me and my four and no more. We're called to be salt out in the world, to bring the presence of God into your place of business. And yeah, you might not be standing there preaching and telling everybody repent, you're going to hell or anything like that. 
but you are there as salt. You're bringing the kingdom of God. You're bringing the presence of God into this world. Amen. Then he got one more. He said they're like leaven. You put a little leaven into the lump of dough, and what happens? It's going to take over and affect the whole thing. Jesus wasn't concerned with you and I getting out of here. If he wanted us out of here as soon as we got saved, then salvation ministry would look a little different, let me tell you what. <laughs> Get people saved and send them home. Jesus wasn't concerned with that. In fact, they, had, they, they got mad at him. The religious community got mad at him. How come you hang out with sinners and publicans and tax collectors and heathens? He said, because the ones who are sick are the ones that need a physician. I didn't, come to call, uh, I didn't come to save the righteous people. I came to seek and save that which was lost. My thought, how come they let him in here? You know, in the previous few weeks, he had been met at the door in some other churches, and they said, we don't want you here. Let it never be said of us. Because that is a fig tree mindset. And when you get under a fig tree, you aren't in the presence of Jesus. Here's another fig tree mindset. The fig tree of self righteousness. That was Adam and Eve, right? They messed up. They knew they messed up. So what am I going to do? Hide and cover myself. Can I tell you something? You can't hide anything from God. You had to come out. God said, get rid of the fig leaves because that isn't going to work. I see you anyway. Amen. Let's make a covering for you that works. Amen. The fig tree of pride. Or this one, the fig tree of, I know better. What are you talking about, Philip? Nothing good can come from Nazareth. I know better. Don't be under the fig tree alone too long. You're still there. Amen? And Philip has this, or excuse me, Nathaniel has this issue. He's under a fig tree. He's, he's, he's got a thing. And Philip calls him, and Nathaniel has to make a decision. I'm going to just stay here and wait for God to come get me out of the fig tree. It's kind of like that guy. You've probably heard this story before. This flooding, and he's up on his roof, and he begins to pray, God, deliver me. I trust you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple hours later, here comes a guy in a rowboat, one of his neighbors. Hey, hop in. I'll row you over to shore. And he says, nope, God's going to deliver me. A <laughs> couple hours later, here comes search and rescue on their speedboat. Hey, come on in. We'll take you to shore. Nope, God's going to rescue me. The next morning, Coast Guard flies over top with a helicopter. They drop a ladder down. Hey, climb on. We'll take you to safety. No, God's going to deliver me. And then that night, he dies of exposure. And he gets to heaven. And he's mad at God. God, where were you? I thought you were going to deliver me. And God says, who sent you the rowboat? Who sent you the speedboat? And who do you think sent you the helicopter? Get out from under your fig tree. See, because here's the first thing. First, we deal with fig tree questions. But then we got to decide, am I going to stay here or am I willing to move? Am I willing to move? He gets up and he begins to move forward. Here's a thing I want to tell you. How many want to be changed into the glory and the, the image of the glory of God? Amen. That's what we're called to do. Into the image of Christ himself. How many want to become more like Christ? Amen. Okay. Hey, uh, warning. Warning. You cannot be changed into his image if you stay under the fig tree. So here's Nathaniel. He gets up and he begins to move. And as he's moving, he's walking up and there's Jesus. 
And Jesus looks out and he said, hey, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. I don't know what I did with that clap, but that must have been a good one. <laughs> behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. How do you know me? Imagine that question. Can you imagine Jesus getting asked that question? How do you know me? I mean, this is Jesus. We just learned in the first couple of verses that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. In verse 14, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That he'd been there in the beginning. He's there now. We know that Ephesians says that from before the foundation of the world, he knew you and you and you and he knew Nathaniel. He called them and cre created them. We know that Jeremiah says that you were formed in your mother's womb. God knit you together and called you from before the foundation of the the world we know that in psalms it says that every day of your life was fashioned and written out before you'd ever lived one of them here is the god of the universe and nathan nathaniel walks up to him and he says hey how do you know me i want to tell you something you're never going to find yourself in a self-discovery book you're never going to find yourself in some kind of a club out in the world you will find yourself when you walk and you come into the presence of god almighty when you step into the presence of jesus you'll finally discover who you are why you are and what you're about you will not find your purpose under a fig tree you will never discover your purpose under a fig tree this is a good guy you would want him as your friend think about this hebrew language how many remember the story of when israel became the name israel it was when jacob was up on a mountain and what was he doing he was wrestling with God. Jacob means schemer, deceiver, trickster, swindler. Jacob had done everything he could. He was a little bit conniving, right? I mean, he stole his brother's birthright. He manipulated his father. He was working every angle trying to make his own way regardless of what happened to those around him. He meets with God on the mountain. They're having a wrestling match. And God says, hey, no longer will you be called Jacob. Now you'll be called Israel. And it says that he, in shock of realization who he was and who he had been, he had a change on that mountain. I want you to notice this, because if you read this in the Hebrew language, this is what it would say. Uh, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no Jacob. Behold a man who wrestles with God, not because he's trying to convince and steer and tweak and deceive his way into something. No, he is wrestling with God out of a transparent heart, out of an open, honest conversation because he really wants to be pleasing to God. You would like Nathaniel. But Nathaniel didn't even fully understand that about himself. I looked up on Amazon last night. Do you know that there are over 10,000 books you can get on Amazon uh, that are called self-discovery books. 10,000 titles. Now, I don't know how old Nathaniel was and how much time he'd spent trying to figure out who he was, but I want you to notice what happens. A five-second conversation with Jesus, and he realizes you know more about me than I've ever known about myself. And he lays down his entire life to follow this King Jesus. History tells us that he became a missionary. One report says that he and Philip worked together and that when it came time, they had made the wrong people mad enough that they both were getting crucified. He was willing to die a martyr's death because of a five-second conversation with Jesus. Amen. Philip died and a great big storm hit, and so they took him off the cross because they thought that the gods were angry with him. It's one historical, you know, so he went on what does he do he goes and becomes a missionary to another place this man altered everything in his life why because one conversation with Jesus you get out from under the fig tree and you meet with Jesus and you'll discover why you exist you will find your purpose how do you know me 
I'm kind of curious how far back Jesus was thinking right then. Because we just know, he says, before uh, Philip called you under the fig tree, yeah, I mean, I can go all the way back to the foundation of the earth. I knew you. Amen. God knows you. He put you together. And I love Jesus' response. Because I said that I saw you, you believe? Third question. I want you to notice how many times the, the concept of sight is used in this passage. First off, you, you go all the way back to where we began in this passage, and, and you would find where, uh, you know, he said, hey, we found him, we've seen him, the Messiah. And he says, what good could come out of Nazareth? What does Philip tell him? Come and, come and see, come and see for yourself. And so they go on down and Jesus says, hey, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. How do you know me? I saw you. Everybody say saw. I saw you before Philip even called you when you were under the fig tree. You are the, the Christ. You're the king of Israel. Because I saw you, you believe you're going to see. Notice the whole language, the whole conversation is about see. Because this I found out. Fig tree mentalities will, uh, you know, you're, you're going to live under a fig tree, then that means you're willing to close your eyes. Does that make sense? In fact, Jesus explained in the, the, the parable of the sower. He tells his disciples, they ask him, why is it you tell everybody parables and yet you're, you, you talk plainly to us? He says, because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it's not given. Why is it not given? He quotes Isaiah chapter 6, prophecy there. And he says, hey, their ears have grown dull of hearing. Their minds ha have, have gotten foggy. That's my language, Okay. And they are blind because they close their eyes. Everybody say, close their eyes. Close their eyes. There's two ways you can be blind. You can be blind because you physically can't see, and you can be blind because you willfully don't see. People that stay under a fig tree are closing their eyes. Does that make sense? Now, sometimes we start there. And we realize, hey, I'm under the influence of something that's not godly in my thinking. Anybody ever been there before? And you realize, hey, this is a fig leaf. This isn't working very good. And so we make a decision. Anytime you realize you're under a fig leaf, what do you do? Get rid of that. Let's get something that works. Let's meet with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So it's not an insult if I'm saying, you know, hey, fig leaf, you know, close. here's the dangerous part is when someone gets so set, I'm right and I'm not budging, I'm just going to stay under my fig leaf. It's a dangerous place to be. Yeah. Amen? Jesus said this, hey, because I said I saw you, you're going to see greater things than these. Soon, last verse in this chapter, you're going to see the heavens opened. Notice he's going to see something, right? When you get out from under the fig tree and you come to Jesus, here's what you anticipate. You're going to see the heavens opened. What does it mean when the heavens are open? It means there is nothing hindering or blocking your interaction and relationship with God Almighty. How does that sound? <clears throat> you can't be under an open heaven and under a fig tree at the same time. Amen? Amen? You're going to see the heavens opened and you're going to see the angels of God ascending. Notice you're going to see something else. You'll see the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. There's things that are moving upwards to heaven. How many know? We can't be so focused on escaping and getting out of here, but we still are aware of heaven. We seek God who is in heaven above. Amen. And we bring our petitions before the Lord. But just like Pastor John Manzowicz preached the other day, when we pray, there's fire God wants to release down. Amen? There are things that are going up and there are answers that are coming down from heaven. Jesus said, you get out from under the fig tree, that's what you're going to see. As I was praying... This is what I felt like the Holy Spirit started stirring in me for today. 
Because there's a number of people going to have a Nathaniel experience today. Amen. Where God is going to expose areas where we've been trying to live under a fig leaf. I want you to notice this. The answer came when? When they saw Jesus. The answer didn't come when they looked it up in the encyclopedia or looked up what their symptoms were on Google. That's a bad idea, by the way. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Has anybody ever done that and got more nervous and not felt better? Yeah. Yeah. when they saw Jesus. Can you play, Leanne? Thank you. Can we pray this morning? I want to pray about two different things. Here's the first. If you're in the room this morning, or you might be watching online, but similar to Adam and Eve, you recognize I haven't lived a life that's godly. And I've never really come under Jesus as the Lord of my life. I want to tell you something. And I mean this in love. You're living under a fig tree. In the same way that Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves up with fig leaves and it didn't work. It's the same position we all are before we come to Jesus and realize, you know what? I, 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 I can't do this on my own. I need his covering. I need his forgiveness for the sin in my life. But if you're in the room and you want to do that and say, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to live under a fig tree of trying to make and earn my own salvation any longer. I, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I want to come under his lordship in my life. Would you just look at me right now, wave at me, do something. I want to pray with you. I see that. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And in the same way that Philip walked up to Nathanael and said unto him, hey, I found the answer you're looking for. We found the Messiah. I found the answer you're looking for. You've been wrestling with some stuff in your life. Some cases it's been a long time. In other cases, not so long. Challenges that you're facing. Mindsets, I may have hit on one of them. But you've been wrestling with this thing. And you're ready to come and meet with Jesus. You don't want to live under a fig tree any longer. Just, just stand to your feet if that's you. I'm not going to live under a fig tree. I'm going to come to Jesus this morning. I'm breaking out of some mindsets, some mentalities some things that will rob you of what God wants to do in your life. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here's the third part. Because I know many of you, you do your best. Most of you in here. In fact, you, you do your best. When God exposes a fig tree, you get rid of it. But here's God's promise for you. You're going to see even greater things than these. You're going to see the heavens opened. How many need the heavens to be open because you got a challenge and you need to see God's answer in your life? Stand to your feet. I want to invite you to do just like, just like Nathaniel did. We got Nathaniel's in the room today. Nathaniel got up from where he was 
And he walked with Philip until he saw Jesus. That's me. Sorry. He got up and he walked until he saw Jesus. Would you get out of your seat and walk right on up here? Because I believe as you get up and you respond, something's going to change. You're going to see Jesus today. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Prayer team, I'm going to need help. Hallelujah. God, just like those young men made that statement, God, we would see Jesus today. We desire to see Jesus today. All over this room. All over this room. God, we desire to see Jesus today. Come on, you begin to tell him, Jesus, I want to see you today. Come on, let it come out of your own mouth. You begin to speak it out of your own language. Okay? Somebody else can only pray for you so long. You got to get up and move forward and walk forward in him. I would see Jesus. God, we would like to see Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You need healing in your body. We want to pray with you. We would see Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You need deliverance and freedom in your mind. Come on up. We want to pray because we would see Jesus. Hallelujah. You want to find your why, your purpose in life. Come on up. We would see Jesus. When you see him, you're going to find your purpose. You're wrestling with that. Somebody in the room, young man, you're wrestling with that. You do not know, and you, you kind of just struggle around. I, I, well, I like this, and I like that, and I like this. I want to tell you, you see Jesus, and you're going to find why you are here. Hallelujah. You'll find why you're here. You'll find your why. You'll find your why. Hallelujah. 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 